Hi, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name's Will and uh, this is Leon. Uh, we're going to tell you a bit about the network we've built for you guys. Um, we started the here. Th sorry, the, the first thing I need to say actually is that we are not responsible for running events.ccdee. <laughs> <laughs> So, so um, networking is, is, does involve a lot of terminology and uh, um, acronyms and, and strange words and stuff like that. So we developed a new item of terminology, the concept of the sauna. And this is various buildings that are all around, all, various rooms that are all around this building, and we put network equipment in them. In them and they get very hot. Um, these are some infrared camera um, photos of uh, some comms rooms. Um, and uh, you can see, yeah, there's, there's quite some heat generated in there. It was a bit of a problem. We're basically running on the limits there because the, the, those rooms aren't designed uh, uh, to host uh, a network of that size. Uh, we have 10 gigabit equipment everywhere and lots of it. Um, and the building just wasn't designed for that. So it's pretty warm in those rooms. <laughs> Here's a graph of some of the temperatures. We collect lots and lots of data, numbers and things. Um, and uh, this is produced using graphite. Um, and it's very easy for us to just kind of have a quick graph of uh, the top temperatures, um, which go up to, yeah, 50 something degrees C. These are degrees C, not Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> Kelvin. At one point, we had to, to move our servers to another room, which has uh, an airco, because the, after we closed the door, the graph climbed above 50, 55 degrees, uh, which wouldn't be good for the hardware. But the equipment handled the, these temperature really well, actually. So we didn't have 100 gigi this year. For 30C3, we had 100 gigi. Um, and you guys didn't actually bother to use it properly. Um, <laughs> So, so we left that equipment in the, in the demo stock, and uh, and we just took uh, 10 gigi. Um, it's quite easy for us to do uh, multiple 10 gigi wavelengths over uh, the single fiber we have that comes into the into the uh, um, into the building. Um, so, so we did that. Um, the up, unused uplink bandwidth is too damn high. Uh, you, you guys uh, peaked about uh, 16 gig out. Um, it's relatively similar to what we've had in previous years uh, with increasing amounts of, especially inbound IPv6, not much outbound IPv6. So the, the setup we're running this year is uh, pretty much the same as last year's, uh, so it's tried and well tested. Um, the core network uh, runs on hardware from Juniper that we, uh, that we get in a loan, um, mostly MX240 and MX80 routers, and for, for the distribution network, we run on EX series switches. Um, and we, we're running a MPLS, VPLS core network, so we can have the routing distributed and still have uh, some networks in a central place like we need for the DHCP server and stuff. Uh, that's basically the same same network as last year. Um, so it wasn't that much work because we had the configs ready. We had everything. We we could steal most most things from last year. Yeah. While we we tend to throw away the actual um, data that that gets accumulated in the logs during Congress, we do um, keep the keep the configs. So if we've used that hardware before, that that makes makes life a lot easier for us. Uh, the various tools and scripts we've developed. Um, Sorry about this diagram. It's uh, the network got rather larger, and uh, so the diagram also got more complicated. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, we we have various Juniper MX and EX distributed around the building and and uh, uh, over over the in-building fiber. So what you what you can see here is on on the right hand side. Um, these are our upstream providers, which are various um, ISPs that just uh, offer to sponsor a single 10G link or a 20G link. Um, and altogether, these are uh, that's an uplink capacity of 50 gig um, this year. Um, and also on the right hand side is our router in the data center, which we run that fiber to from the building. And then the rest of the, the that, that map is basically just the, the, the patch rooms inside these buildings with various routers and switches. So we had a colo, um, same as every year. Um, it is for computers with one gig and above network connections. Um, we had 
Um, around, actually it was 80 to 100 machines in the colo. Uh, I'll show you some photos in a minute. And it was using about 15 kilowatts, which is quite a lot of heat. Um, it was obviously nice and warm and, and cozy in there because uh, we had this ticket from the knock help desk guys uh, over here where um, someone had decided to sleep in the colo. Um, and, uh, and then, and then, <laughs> And then, and then left his uh, sleeping equipment there and, and wondered, um, well, we, we did not cleanse this hellish place and, and remove it, but uh, <laughs> someone, someone obviously, obviously did. Um, so sorry if you're in the audience and you're looking for your stuff. Uh, don't know. <laughs> the, the colo is for machines, really. <laughs> Um, we had a much better layout this time. It, it does kind of turn into a bit of a, a cable salad, cable salad, you know. Um, and uh, uh, we, we, uh, uh, we we were able to kind of make things a bit better. It's it's in it's actually in the the balcony of um, uh, 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 South, South, South Three. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah you can you can see it in the background uh, on that picture. Yeah. Um, this picture is a bit dark because. Well, hackers like darkness, right? You can see the blinking lights. Um, uh, uh, yeah, big pile of machines. So we had some interesting, uh, this is a topical kind of uh, discussions on, on Twitter with um, people. Uh, I remember a few years ago, someone said, oh, Congress has more uh, capacity available than the whole of Africa. Um, and now people this year say, oh, Congress has more, cap more, more, uh, more better network than uh, North Korea. And well, this is true. We don't think this is something that's particularly funny. Um, we, we, most of us in the NOC are in professional internet engineers, and um, we think if uh, it, it's a really sad state of affairs if, if we can build a better network than for a whole country. So, um, so well, hopefully uh, um, we'll continue to have a good network, but maybe some other countries will too in, in the future. On the plus side, Africa is catching up, so Definitely, we, we don't yeah. have more capacity than Africa yeah. anymore. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this was actually we we did some sort of fun analysis of where where um, traffic between Congress and, and North Korea was going, but uh, um, there there wasn't much traffic. It was below the the in the sampling area of error of uh, our, our measurements. So um, maybe. It, wasn't only just due to this really circuitous route where uh, packets were going, you know, the whole um, width of the United States and, and across the Pacific to uh, to get to North Korea. But uh, um, there we go. So wireless. Um, wireless. Um, we this year we we're running on Aruba equipment. Um, we had two controllers um, with 10G uplinks. Um, it's a it's a it's a lot much larger setup than last year's. Uh, we've had we've had I think 70, 72 uh, access points last year, um, and this year we're on one twenty five. Um, uh, one hundred fifteen of these are actually serving clients, so you, that these are the ones you connect to, and the other ten are just air monitors, really, that we use in high density areas like these lecture halls. Um, which don't do anything else but measuring the air quality and the spectrum, so the the controller can do more intelligent decisions about how to uh, how to plan the wireless. Um, also, we we had way more users than last year's. Um, at 30 C3, where we had five five thousand users uh, in the wireless and peak times, and this year we peaked at seven thousand eighty eight eight hundred. Um, and that means uh, an average of 68 clients uh, per access point in, in average. Which is kind of high, and we'll come on to that in a minute. Um, an interesting thing is that not everyone is, is here or has devices connected, um, and we saw in the region of 20,000 unique devices, i.e. that's about a couple, two devices per attendee, I guess. Um, so people, people come and go from Congress. And the peak traffic, there was about three gigabit on the wireless, which is, which is a fair bit. Um, we had some interesting graphs, because we collect numbers. Um, <laughs> I, I don't have a, uh, we collect numbers, but not your data. Um, 
this is, I don't have a pointer, but uh, basically if you look at this large purple graph here, this is actually, um, uh, this is actually the number of users in Salines, in Hall 1. Uh, and then obviously the talk finished here and they went, everyone goes out into this uh, cyan sort of area, which is actually the foyer behind Sal 1. So everyone just... <laughs> walks out and their devices stay connected to the network and then, oh, there's another interesting talk in Salines again, so everyone goes back in again. And <laughs> <laughs> so, so we were actually using this in a knock. Hey, there's loads and loads of people in Sal 2. What is the talk there? We should go and see what it is. <laughs> <laughs> This is a picture from the FNORD news show, actually. So on the, on the right-hand side, uh, it's when the FNORD news show ended and everybody uh, went home, basically. <laughs> Some of them went to the bar first, I think. <laughs> crypto. If you don't use the crypto we provide, then people will sniff your traffic. Um, we provide, we had about 60%, 82.1x WPA Enterprise clients. That's where you enter, basically, a random username and password. Um, this is what you should be using. Please do not use the unencrypted Wi-Fi. We do include it, for instance, for compatibility reasons, like you have some old hardware or Raspberry Pis and stuff like that. But if you persist in using the unencrypted Wi-Fi, then we can't help you, and your data will be sniffed, recorded, and sold. <laughs> Um, this time around, the encryption um, actually is terminated uh, with the Aruba setup on the controller itself, which is um, stored somewhere safe in the building, um, which reduces the attack surface, because that means that the, the traffic is also encrypted all the way throughout the network as well, the, the wired network that the access points connect to. But yes, please use the encrypted stuff. Um, we have some more graphs of the wireless. Um, this is actual traffic, uh, like megabits per second, I think. Um, you, can, you, you, you can see uh, the times when hackers sleep. Um, <laughs> Um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not actually in this graph, but we've measured the, the lowest number of users, uh, I think at 7 and 8 a.m. So that's when the bottom <laughs> of the curve is. Um, so what, what you can see here is it's basically that we have a lot of traffic. That this, is only, uh, this is only Saal 1 and 2, uh, Saal 1 and 2, so the, the main lecture halls. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's about 1.2 gigabits of, of peak traffic. And the thing is, what happens if you if you have this much traffic um, on the wireless? We we have an, a pretty graph of this as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty clear, isn't it? So, <laughs> so this is this is uh, this is uh, the, the the spectrum utilization. Basically, it's 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 a do by five gigahertz hardware. It does improve year on year, I think, as people replace hardware. Um, and, and yeah, 65% 5 gigahertz clients is, is we, we, think we think you're getting there, so that's nice. So we had some problems with the network. Um, it's never, never perfect. Um, we had one of the uh, Juniper virtual chassis. Well, it, it didn't literally explode. It, it is pretty warm in there, but uh, um, it, uh, it kind of fell apart and uh, uh, we had to yeah at some point at some point well the virtual chassis are basically single switches that we uh, multiple single switches that we stack together uh, so they are one virtual switch um, so we that's just one IP address we SSH into and uh, basically it's just one managed switch and what happened at some point is that it basically fell apart one of these single switches rebooted and yeah we don't really know what happened there it might be a failed stacking cable the ones we used to connect the switches together but we didn't really investigate it we might investigate it after the event but we probably, <laughs> probably won't we, we, we had um we had a bug which caused uh, the we, we talked about the router that is in the, the data center IPHH across town um, and uh, we were enabling IP IP fix which is um, uh, we're using this for flow monitoring. It's not for monitoring of, of your data, but it's um, we want to collect some data about where traffic is going on the internet because uh, the Congress network is actually part of the internet. We run our own autonomous system, and we, we like to uh, adjust where the traffic goes and, and uh, provide best performance. But anyway, we enabled this feature, and it caused the line card to hang. Um, un unfortunately, on the router, 
in the data center. And uh, we'd already built most of the Congress network at that time, and we were kind of slacking off already with a few beers. And uh, then, then, fortunately, we still had a designated driver at 2 a.m. because, uh, uh, yeah, I wasn't driving anywhere. And we had to drive across town. <laughs> we had to drive across town and, and like get into the data center and adjust things. Special thanks to the guys uh, of the data center who stayed up until like 4 a.m. just to allow us access so we could reboot the router. Um, we, we had a few, few Wi-Fi problems. Uh, one of the things is uh, there are these Etsy regulations that um, uh, the access points need to detect uh, 5 gigahertz radar. I believe it's um, uh, weather radar. Um, and, and what happens is the access points listen, and if they hear something they don't recognize, they shut up um, because they think, hey, there's some important weather radar here, um, so uh, I won't transmit in this area. Um, but we found this, this uh, uh, function was very sensitive, um, so we had to adjust the whole channel plan, and, and, and this, was, this was a bit of a problem. Um, it meant we, couldn't, we, we wanted to get more out of the network and couldn't because of, of this detection. And it's simply due to the amount of like, electronic devices and general stuff going on at Congress, and, the, and it's just a fun function of the density here. Um, so we'll, we'll be working with the, with the vendor on that to, to improve things and maybe make this more tunable with time. So, 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 so we, again, we need to, uh, we need to thank you, um, some companies basically who, who, who provide equipment and, uh, and su support so we can run this network because, uh, we can't rent it. You can't rent so, these amounts of, um, of gear. We, we can't phone someone up and say, please, can we pay you money for this? Uh, we, we're merely reliant on, um, people's generosity. So, <laughs> Especially Juniper, who, who provided, like, I think, 1.2 tons of equipment. <laughs> I think it was, was it 3 million euros of equipment, yeah. insurance value? Yeah, it's yeah. about 3 million euros of insurance value. Yeah. Um, also, that's not a company, but we really need to thank the people of the Knock Help Desk, who keep a lot of work from us, and... We had a we had a very um, great support from Aruba, um, and uh, uh, we've already talked about Juniper. There's a, a company, a German company called Flex Optics, who have been really kind with supplying us optics for all kinds of events. Uh, these are the actual lasers, and um, we had hundreds and hundreds of these, like a, a very huge box, um, and uh, and and they're very very kindly supplying that to us for free. Um, we, we, we get a donated bandwidth from Atrato, Kaya, and, and KPN, so thanks for that. Um, and then... All, all, kinds, all kinds of other bits and pieces um, fr from people's closets and so forth to make the network work. But thanks, thanks to everyone, really. Uh, and uh, now wash your hands. <laughs> uh, does anyone have any questions? Yes. So this talk's going to be a little different than all of the others you heard before. We're going to do uh, questions after each section. So if you have questions, just run to one of the microphones. Be quick and brief so we can do as many as possible. Um, so if anyone has a question, just run to one of those lighted spots. And we'll start with one from the internet, I think. Indeed. Um, there was a question about whether you know what the current market prices for one gigabyte of Congress data would be. <laughs> we haven't received any offers, so I have really no idea. <laughs> okay, thanks. All right, then I think we'll start with microphone two. Um, I just wanted to ask if you have numbers about NAT64 users. Uh, yeah, we do, but I'm not carrying them in my head. Um, okay. But uh, but if you if you come and talk to us afterwards, we can we can talk about that setup in in more detail. We did have some various people contact us over the Twitter account um, who who were using the NAT64 and some feedback on that. So we're going to continue with this at forthcoming congresses. All right, microphone three. Okay, uh, 
Just so you can sleep safely, um, I'm one of the InfoDesk coordinators and uh, we found this guy's sleeping mattress. He was searching for four days <laughs> and he quite got happy. <laughs> Hey, another quick question from the interwebs. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, there's a question about whether you had any fallback on the internet connection side of things. Um, fall, fallback. Um, do, do they mean security instance or? Um... I just, I think just in terms of uh, whether you had an additional line or something, I don't know. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, we, we actually have to buy the fiber. I think we actually have to buy it for the whole year or something. No, uh, we're, we're renting it for a month. Mm. Well, it does cost quite a lot of money. So we be, we, uh, for a four day event, we don't have kind of super dual paths out the building in case a digger, digger comes. Um, uh, we, we'll probably use more equipment next time and have uh, more resilience in terms of the equipment, but probably not in terms of the physical fiber due to the cost. But talking about abuse, you can't tell me you didn't get oh, any. Abuse. Right, yeah. Um. Um, there were very few abuse complaints this year. I think uh, we had like three cases in which we did something. Otherwise, it's just automated stuff where people were port scanning and do less yeah. port scanning. It's really annoying. Yeah, it um, just fills up the inbox and someone has to close all those tickets in RT you well, with it, figure out how to do this with MySQL, it's a nightmare. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, um, all right, then the microphone three, please. Uh, regarding the abuse, uh, do you reject automatically mails from uh, fail to ban, for instance? Um, we, we get them all and we process them. Um, it's, it's difficult. We, we, we don't reject them automatically because we think that that's kind of rude. Um, we do, in, in theory, at least collect this data so we can look at it. Um, but um, there's little we can do. We provide a service where um, uh, if someone sends us an abuse complaint, we can guarantee they will never receive another packet from Congress ever again. Um, and this, this, uh, so someone may phone up and they say, hey, I'm seeing this bad traffic, and we just say, well, we'll just put an access list on and you'll never see us, you'll never hear from us again. And um, that, that seems to keep people happy. <laughs> and I had a quick other question. You mentioned you keep flow data. Did you check how much traffic go, was going through Tor? Uh, no, no, we absolutely do not look at the protocol data. Oh, so, I, so I meant just by looking if people are contacting Tor nodes. Uh, we so don't, a list of IPs we, public. We, we don't collect that information okay. either. We don't collect IPs, we don't store that. Um, we throw away data as soon as we can. Um, uh, we really have no interest in collecting uh, data about your packets other than uh, this, this uh, particular flow data I'm talking about is actually to on whole autonomous system basis, so it's to hold okay. big ISPs. So we might know how, you know how many gigabits we did to Deutsche Telekom, but not how many to your DSL line in Deutsche Telekom, for instance. Okay, thanks. Okay, and then uh, I think one last question at microphone two, please. Are there any, any signs of spy agencies monitoring the network? Um, no. That's a tough one. <laughs> That's a tough one because we don't notice any. That's all I can say. Uh, if, if, if we had noticed anything, we would have taken uh, action. But we, these people are good, right? So, mm. <laughs> too good. Yeah, it's, it's possible that, um, it, whereas we have a number of upstreams, that yes, something could be happening there. Um, uh, but it's, again, it's outside the, border of our, uh, the outside the border of our network. So, we don't know. So just encrypt everything. Yeah. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then thanks Rock again to um, the Knock guys. Rock 13 twice. <laughs> okay, so we don't have any more questions. If you're done, no, I'm um, done. who's coming up next? <laughs> I just need to unlock my laptop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fengel, I think you're next. All right, so you're going to talk about CERT, right? No, it's just take stuff. It's, it's, it's on there, but they will. So we have it on the right We need a different screen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you have Can you swap to the other? Uh, yeah, so. Uh.
There we it's go. good good that we have the VOC guys all here. Yes. Yeah, so I want to talk to you about the power network we have built up here in the Congress area for you to use it. So the building itself has not so much power outlets uh, than Congress uh, members uh, here. So this table is uh, mainly what we have supplied on each area. So in Hall 3, we had the biggest amount of power uh, for you guys to use. Uh, in Hall H, uh, also with the party area, uh, they are using the power uh, much in the afternoon. For the co-location, we had uh, more than on mainly anything else. Yeah, our material we have used. Uh, you see the big amount of uh, distribution boxes in the uh, 16 amps, 32 amps, uh, 63 amps, and 125 amps. The 125 amps is the first time in Congress we have used them. We needed them for the uh, whole, so for the whole three uh, because the assembly team put all people together that uh, wanted to use 3D printers, laser cutters, and uh, other stuff uh, at one. Uh, Spot of the hall. And in total, we have installed uh, 9,850 meters of cables, 673 power distribution boxes. And from our side, we had delivered 3,200 power sockets, uh, but uh, every assembly have bring their own power socket lines with them, and so I think it will be much more here. Yeah, we have first time we have uh, measured the consumption in the halls, or in some halls. <laughs> so hall three, for example, was 1,067 kilowatt hours, and in the co-location we have used 931 kilowatt hours. That's the consumption for the whole day. But we have to say, last year it was uh, doubled. So we have, uh, I think, a green congress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, I think it was on my side. Uh, I don't have any much to tell you because I don't have any da data from the controllers or something like this. <laughs> so again, uh, I don't know, would you mind ask, uh, answering questions if there are any other, any questions about power? If I don't know. Are. Do we have any electrocutions? I don't think so. No, no. <laughs> Might happen with those lines lying around everywhere. <laughs> okay, all right. So then please give it up for um, the Seitenstraße. Okay. So, hi, I'm Sebastian. I'm going to talk about Seidenstraße. Um, yeah, this year was a lot smaller than last year. We've only used 600 meters of tube. That's 700 meters less, uh, 700 meters less, 100 meters less than yeah, last year. Last year we had 700. Um, it took eight days to set everything up. We had four to seven hackers working on it Mm, almost full time. Those were the same guys who meant our Seidenstraße assembly, which we also had this year. And uh, yeah, I'd like to ask for some applause for them because I was none of them. <laughs> and and I couldn't come here until the 26th. And when I arrived here, everything was set up already. So that's quite impressive. And. Um, we also saw some new trends in building capsules. This year we had way more LEDs. I had to photograph them all with LEDs off because they were too bright and the hall is really dark, so otherwise you wouldn't see the capsule. The capsules were also heavier. I think nobody cares anymore about our standardized uh, weight limits. <laughs> so because of a lot of LEDs, you need a lot of battery power in there. And 
we, I've seen quite a few 3D printed capsules, but most of them use 3D printed parts somewhere, or even parts from real uh, pneumatic cube capsules that you can buy commercially, and they were sawed in half and adapted to our system, so that's really cool. So this year we also tried to do some fancy crafts. <laughs> Mm, we did not uh, put up uh, transmission logs as last year for people to file things manually because um, that didn't work out too well and the numbers just didn't add up in the end. So this year everything was done by automatic capsule counters at the central node. And these are the data for the central node. Um, basically, uh, yeah, the traffic was similar to last year. So this is the data from I think day one at 19 o'clock to uh, just before the talk here. And we've got uh, overall about 550 capsules that have been sent or received. And the fastest capsule was uh, 14 meters per second, which is in a similar area than last year. And you can also see some peaks in this graph that might be interesting because those peaks were when there were no talks and people had time to play with the Seidenstraße. <laughs> also, you can see the sleep times, uh, except for day one. In day one, we had a little bit of a power outage because someone unplugged the Zellrohr assembly and inserted a vacuum cleaner instead. <laughs> We also experimented with auto routers. Um, we tested some ideas here at the Congress. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it all boils down to the tube is less flexible than the people building the auto routers except, uh, expected beforehand. So we need more motor power on those things and we don't have any standard routing protocol. So even if there was a working router, we would not know how to tell it where to route. So <laughs> we are somehow working on that. Uh, if anyone has good ideas, uh, just write a mail to our mailing list or even better subscribe there. Um, which brings me to the last slide. Um, so if you want to contact us with ideas, or if you want to help us with something, uh, just go to IRC. We are on Hackend in the Seidenstraße channel. There's not, not much going on there over the year, but I'm usually there to respond. Also, we've got a mailing list that has a bit more traffic. Uh, yeah, it's a standard mailman setup, so just write um, empty mail with the subject subscribe to this address and yeah, I guess you know the drill. Also, we are planning to do a Seidenstraße setup on the camp next year, which might actually be useful there and not just a toy. But uh, we need a lot of more helpers to do this because doing this by eight or nine guys is uh, really a lot of work. And yeah, I guess we all want to enjoy the camp. So the more people help, the faster we are done. Also, uh, short note here, if you want some Seidenstraße at home, you can get free tubes from us today. After we tear everything down, uh, just call uh, 4451, and then we'll get you some tubes. But you have, to, you have to have some way to transport them home, so we can do that for you. And also, it would be nice if you would have some way to transport them to the camp, because we will need them there. So that's all from my side. All right, thank you, Seidenstraße. Just, I have a quick question. No flying Marte bottles this year? No, no flying Marte bottles, uh, <laughs> no broken tubes, no special incidents. Uh, All right, that's an improvement. Wait, maybe one. There was a DDoS attack at my automated capsule counter. Somebody attached two meters of LED string to his capsule, <laughs> and I counted like 300 capsules in less than two seconds. <laughs> Okay, we have a question over there. Yes, about routing. Have you thought about MPLS over Seidenstraße? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm only a bit of a network guy. I'm not really sure what MPLS is about. 
But we've been discussing uh, like doing IP-based stuff over Seidenstraße by using uh, NFC tags and putting the packets on there. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, there's another question. So you had a packet inspection point at some place near the angle stuff. Uh, what was that about? The packet inspection point? Yeah, there, there was like a box in the tube um, just at the, at the ceiling. Oh, okay. I didn't see that one. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, hmm, don't know. <laughs> Not I'm even, not supposed not to tell you about that one. Safe. <laughs> or maybe we just find the uh, agency <laughs> surveying stuff. Yeah. Just maybe. on the wrong network. Maybe. <laughs> okay, I think that's it from the Seitenstraße. Thanks again. <laughs> And I think we only have the walk left, so. Please. Can, can we have. Uh, yeah, thank you. So, um, hello, I'm uh, Denimo. I'm uh, giving a short report from the Video Operation Center. Um, and uh, please give big hands to our Winkelkatzer again. <laughs> and of course, other than her, there are uh, quite a few other people involved. So, who are we? We're actually not only C3 Walk, we are C3 Streaming, which uh, comprises of uh, the Video Operation Center of the CCC, uh, the FEMIV and the AGS, who are both uh, uh, very much into, uh, into uh, video and helped us a lot, like, every year. Um, I guess it's actually new, uh, and uh, thank you for joining us. Um, Um, so we, we we built this and we prepared this um, and we improve on every conference uh, that we go. But obviously, um, the, uh, the 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 congress is like the, the the most challenging conference, right? So uh, we do we approach this in different teams. We have infrastructure, we have streaming and encoding, uh, we have uh, uh, a team doing the website. Uh, um, we have post-processing and coding operations subtitles. Um, uh, this is uh, this is people working together in their groups and across groups. So this works pretty well. And we actually had a meeting um, a few uh, a few days be, uh, or a few weeks uh, before this congress uh, to prepare everything in Berlin, um, where we where we actually uh, put this together. Um, so what's new this year? Uh, we had video on demand, which was really great because it was just supposed to be better and it was uh, really received extremely well, uh, which is awesome uh, because it was better, but we had very, very little complaints anyway. Um, for the first time, we have full HD in all the, the halls, including the Zendit Centrum in H.264 and VP8, so also free codec supported in high definition. Our release pipeline now supports release to YouTube, so everyone who doesn't manage to go to Media CCCD can now receive our content as well. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the amount of applause that's due. That's perfect. <laughs> um, so subtitles in the room and on the web player, and actually uh, we had uh, great feedback there. Uh, I'll, I'll get to that uh, in a separate slide. Uh, we had GoPro cams for presenting small objects. Like it was a big problem in the last congresses when people had to show their tiny it's a bitsy hardware hacks, and we actually had to zoom in with our cameras from far away. So now we had GoPros uh, that that actually could catch this a lot better. Um, we had backup recording with SSDs, which was really, really good uh, because we actually needed them uh, and it helped us recovering quite some recordings that would have otherwise been lost. <laughs> and um, we gradually improved other things like the content distribution networks and so on and so on. It's just really too much uh, to, to count on because the, it's just amazing what people do uh, in this environment. 
uh, and with DVB, uh, DVB-T, uh, we actually have DVB-T uh, broadcasting equipment in this hall. We have an official broadcasting license. So uh, I think we didn't really announce this too much, but you could actually have watched a talk um, through DVB-T. Um, <laughs> So uh, how did this actually work? Um, and it, it's actually surprising that you can. Can you guys actually make out uh, what what these uh, what, what this graphic reads? Okay, perfect. Um, so <laughs> I, I wasn't sure if that would work out. Uh, so we actually start in the middle. Uh, so we have the camera sources and the slides which come in via SDI into our mixer uh, where they are mixed live. You, you, you might have seen the awesome split screen view that we have courtesy of our hardware mixers um, that we had um, in all, uh, in all uh, rooms for the first time this year. Uh, we have, um, and, uh, we, we, and, and when we go through encoding, we actually have two ways now. Uh, first, the, uh, the way to the relays and then uh, the, the, the actual production line where we actually cut and edit um, the videos and, um, and equip them with metadata uh, a bit more uh, and actually produce all the other formats. Um, we had an encoder cluster uh, that encoded everything from, a, from the full HD master uh, uh, in Berlin. So we pushed everything through the network. So thank you, uh, NOC, for providing us uh, with the network uh, that we had, uh, because that was essential to get, uh, to get our service uh, to, uh, to the people. Uh, so thank you. Um, and so just to finish the production line, um, we then push it to our CDN, which runs on Mirrorbrain, free software solution, and uh, on uh, YouTube. Um, and uh, you guys who watch it live, you could see it through RTMP, through HLS, um, uh, and um, through basically the, the, the relays, we had master relays and, and, and edge relays. And we had one relay that would do the video on demand because uh, it would basically reuse the HLS snippets um, and serve them uh, for you uh, delayed viewing pleasures. So now for the subtitles. We had uh, 40 angels helping in subtitling the talks. <laughs> Up to three parallel tracks and very good feedback from uh, hearing impaired and deaf viewers. And the service uh, was very popular with people that are not as fluent in either German or English. So. Um, the, actually, the, those people actually get included uh, as well, which is great. Uh, and for the usage peaks uh, here, for the subtitles, the, uh, the FNORD News Show was 120 subtitles viewer, and uh, Jacobs and Laura's talk was about 100 subtitles viewers, which is great. Um, so, um, what else happened? Uh, the most remarkable thing, and you might have read things about washing hands. We had to learn the hard way. Um, the, the downtime wasn't so much hardware. That worked pretty well. I, I mean, if you have res uh, if you have watched the streams, they were mostly reliable and very much reliable this year. This is the feedback that we got uh, through most of the channels. Um, but the downtimes were not like technical nature. Um, we actually were uh, the virus operating center. <laughs> That's what people called us. We had 25 core people, and one afternoon, I think it was on day two, uh, we had nine people down within four hours. And mad props to CERT for helping us getting them fixed up again. Some, most of them are well again or on their way to recovery. So thank you, CERT. And as I mentioned, technically, um, DVBT, because we were still testing it, was a bit flaky. Um, it will be uh, a, a lot more useful on the camp, 
I guess. And we had a short uh, fronted outage because of a dependency on event CCCD. That was quickly fixed, and we were back online, and it only affected the front ends. People that were still watching, uh, that were still watching the uh, the streams, could keep watching, um, and were not disturbed. Yeah, stats. Um, uh, I mean, competing with the knock in terms of stats is just useless, so I, I won't even try, but we have some. Um, we delivered 80 terabyte of streams. <laughs> uh, video on demand, nine terabytes. <laughs> CDN 29 uh, uh, K views uh, handled by our mirror network. Um, the raw video material was 4.5 terabytes, and it was 184 hours of recording. And because we have to duplicate them for all the other formats, this amounts of uh, that amounts to almost 900 hours of uh, video that needs to be processed by the cluster. <laughs> Okay, I don't need to explain that. <laughs> so yeah, but we 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 actually had peak. Uh, uh, we had a peak at almost 9k viewers, and at that time we were pushing out uh, 10 gigabits um, of uh, of video and audio traffic. Um, and another interesting thing, um, we also streamed the Zendet Centrum. And um, no video on demand because that 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 was only established for the uh, uh, for the main rooms, um, and it turns out it may be a good idea to have that for uh, Zendet until next year as well. Um, what's amazing is we we could actually see the NSFW uh, late night show. Uh, we could actually see that they had 3K viewers, uh, which is absolutely astonishing. Um, so I thought that was uh, worthwhile mentioning. And uh, there was another uh, strange thing. You know, we are great cat content lovers, and because of that, we have Winkelkatzen. And suddenly, we were innocently idling and working away, whatever we were doing, and, some, and uh, sudden, uh, when, when suddenly this happened. There was a larger-than-life uh, Winkelkatzen showing up at the VOC, and thank you to the donator. <laughs> okay, so this is basically it. Um, finally, I would like you to give big hands to everyone who's helped making this happen, and this would not be possible without the people manning the cameras, uh, manning the video mixes, and uh, running like mad to get everything organized so you and the people outside of this uh, conference center can actually take part in this conference. Thank you, Video Angels. Okay, and if there are any questions? All right, last question time again. Yeah, you had microphone too, go ahead. All right, um, I'm wondering for DVB-T, uh, do you know what the range was or the power? I'll give that to the expert. Hi. So we, we planned with three uh, tr transceivers, or no, senders, um, one in the Hall 3, uh, one at the Garderoben foyer, and uh, one at, yeah, somewhere at between Hall 1 and Hall 2. We actually deployed only one in Hall 3 with uh, receiving power of 500 milliwatts, so 1.5 watts, because the Bundesnetzagentur, uh, it was easier for us, the Bundesnetzagentur only allow indoor coverage, and so it's much cheaper for us. Yeah, And it actually worked just today, so uh, we had some problems there, uh, yeah, you see the, the headcount number down, was down on, on the third day, and it was kind of a beta test for the camp. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay, we'll just go ahead with a question from the internet. Uh, sure. Um, the internet just wants to give you guys a big shout out for providing the service, and a big thumbs up. 
Um, there was a question about whether you know the latency of the stream, or whether it's it depends if you. If it, it depends if you use RTMP or HLS, I think RTMP is faster, about 15 seconds, and uh, HLS depends on your client. All right, thank you. Uh, microphone two, please. Um, also about DVBT, um, I was wondering if you, uh, in, in what resolution you put that out and if that will be uh, HD content uh, on the camp at least. So your question is about uh, HD on DVBT. Yes. Um, yeah, we will might do this on the camp. We didn't do this in today or this year. Um, maybe using uh, DVBT two and so on. But we will see how this works. But in theory, you could also do HD on on DVBT one, but only with fewer channels. So, yeah. Okay, I think that's it. So please give a huge round of applause for all the people making this Congress possible.